Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video using Space Engine we're going to go on a bit of an adventure and look for various exoplanets that may actually have life on their surface. And here's actually one of such planets that we're going to start with. Anyway, let's go and find out how much life we can find in our own galaxy. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now this particular planet is actually in a real star uh, system known as Hipparchus 17822. The thing is, uh, this planet is procedurally generated so it might not be real. But it is very interesting to us for one specific reason. This is actually a very good simulation, a very good representation of what Earth may have looked like several billion years ago right after the very, very large um, snowball Earth period, basically when the ice started melting and the unicellular life that this particular planet also has started to appear in the ocean. So there is, as you can see here, there's actually organic unicellular um, marine life here. And on both sides of this planet, there are these very large um, polar caps because the water um, is kind of slowly being uncovered by uh, or from the uh, ice age and at some point this ice cap will completely disappear and you can kind of even see the effects um, that caused uh, this ice cap to disappear right here so that there are these volcanoes appearing from the ice caps that indicate that at some point the eruptions uh, from the surface of this planet increased various gases in the atmosphere increasing the greenhouse effect and thus melting the ice caps. So several billion years ago our Earth looked similar to this and as a matter of fact this planet also has a moon around it relatively similar to our own moon in a similar location as it was back in the days, much much closer to Earth. So this is a pretty good representation of early Earth. Now I found quite a lot of various um, planetary systems that have life on them and as a matter of fact even in this system itself there's another planet there's a frozen gas giant or I guess ice giant in that sense that has um, I believe it's a moon of some sorts yeah there it is a very large moon or a frozen titan that is that also has life on it and this is an exotic unicellular life that lives in very very cold temperatures and by itself this planet or i guess this moon sorry looks absolutely incredible look at those very beautiful orange clouds that it has that seem to be made up of maybe nitrogen because that's the atmospheric composition here and so this is a pretty unusually beautiful world that i, I was able to discover here and we just witnessed the uh, the eclipse from the actual planet that it orbits. Now this this moon is even larger than our planet Earth, although it's not as massive. But uh, yeah, let's actually go and explore and discover some of these other life uh, systems that, that, that I found, but specifically we're going to do this from scratch. We're going to go back to Earth and um, we're going to look for um, life planets um, from from here, from Earth, by going into this star browser and uh, selecting very, very specific uh, characteristics. And, and we're actually going to be looking for life at a very specific distance. Uh, we're going to choose maybe a thousand light years just so that we can actually estimate um, the likelihood of finding life away from our planet Earth, at least um, with a current understanding of how life is created and how different solar systems are made as well. All right, so we're looking for a planet. We want it to be, well, actually, let's look for Earth-like planets first. We're going to look for Earth-like planets with temperate climate. We want, I actually wanted to find a ring planet, but that's not important. And we're going to look for organic unicellular or multicellular life first. That's basically similar life to Earth um, at a distance of about thousand light years away from us. And this is basically only a part of our own galaxy. And all right, here we go. So this is all very statistical. This is um, not real life, obviously. And uh, statistical analysis here will show how many um, different objects and how many different solar systems would life we might discover within about thousand light years away from us. So, so far there's just over 30. 
Let's wait a little bit more and... Here we go. All right, 53 different objects have been discovered um, with essentially life somewhere on one of those objects. And usually it's going to be a temperate um, Terra-like planet. Now we're going to select the ones that are closest to us, actually. Let's go with the closest one first. And this is Hipparchus 13375. And if we go here, we'll discover that this is a orange dwarf. It's a K-type star. And as you can see, it has a lot of objects orbiting around it. And there's a very interesting um, belt, almost like an asteroid belt, very close to the star here. And some other planets orbiting around it. But the planet that has um, a life is going to be somewhere on the outskirts, probably in the habitable zone. So there it is. It's a cool Terra with life. Temperatures here are minus 25 degrees Celsius. And if you take a look at it, and once again, it's a very unique looking planet with what seems to be, oh yeah, there's a lot of light here. It's organic, multicellular, marine and terrestrial life. So basically it's plant life and um, ocean life as well. And you can definitely see the plant life here on the surface in green. So this is the closest one to us at the distance of just over 40 light years away. And it already has multicellular life here is actually unusual but i guess also very lucky in a sense now unfortunately the game doesn't really create the plant life itself it just makes the planet look green so that's kind of what this life looks like uh, but maybe one day in a future update you'll actually get to see plants and actual trees and maybe even moving organisms but for now this is this is how it looks so uh that's just the first planet we've discovered and as you can see, there's actually relatively many, um, even within about 100 light years away from us, there's uh, like six various objects, and one of them even has two planets um, with life. And let's, let's just take a look at this one. This is another Hipparchus star. Once again, somewhat similar to our own sun, but maybe just a little bit less massive. And here, um, if we actually take a look at the planets present, one of the temperate Terra planets that has very, very Earth-like conditions. As a matter of fact, this is as Earth-like as I've seen in a very long time, almost 15 degrees Celsius on average, although the atmospheric pressure here is very high, 30, 30 atmospheres. Um, this is actually a very sort of terrestrial world at a distance similar to Earth from the Sun and with diameter um, about 1.4 diameters of our planet Earth and also a little bit more massive. So the gravity here is about double the Earth gravity. But let's actually go and take a look at it because it does have very unique features, including rings. And this kind of gives you an idea that some of these worlds that might have extraterrestrial life on them, if, if there is such a thing, um, will look nothing like our planet Earth. Like this is a brown planet with rings with absolutely incredibly looking atmosphere. And if there is actually any um, intelligent life that can develop on these planets, their understanding of the universe will be completely different, simply because just the fact that there's rings here will actually uh, make the understanding of the universe to these aliens completely different. And maybe we'll talk about how the rings might have changed the humanity in one of the future videos. But here we only have um, unicellular organic life, nothing terrestrial. And the second object with life here is, I believe, um, oh, it's actually the gas giant itself. There is a cold gas giant with life on it. And once again, with very beautiful rings as well. And this is aerial life. Basically, it's the life that lives in the upper parts of the gas giant atmosphere. And that by itself is also very unique and very unusual. So this kind of gives you an idea of how many different planets there might be with organic life out there. And you can definitely explore this in more detail yourself using Space Engine and find out some really incredible looking uh, planets and really incredible looking objects out there. I'm not going to obviously go through all of them. They're all very unique and uh, worth exploring. But let's actually see if we can find any unusual exotic life. Now, this would be not organic. This would be maybe silicon based or something else. And so we're going to start looking for it once again from Earth. 
and uh, see if we can discover any unusual life out there that is not organic. So let's see how how much of life we can find within about a thousand light years away from us. And we're not really finding any, and that's because we're looking on temperate terrace. Now, organic life might actually be easily found on these types of objects, but inorganic life uh, might need different types of planetary objects. So we're going to look for any planet with uh, exotic life on it, within about a thousand light years away from Earth. And just like that, we found at least one, two, and maybe even more. And these are quite far away, actually, about a thousand light years away from us. And there's a few a little bit closer. Let's go to the closest one as soon as the search is finished. And interestingly, the closest one is about 88 light years away from us. It's an L-type star and uh, has at least one planet with life on it. But there's even a brown dwarf that we've discovered right here that seems to have exotic life. Let's actually take a look at this one first because this is a little bit interesting. So this is not really a, a star. It's a brown dwarf. It's an object that doesn't have nuclear reaction on it. And around this brown dwarf, there is what seems to be a frozen titan. A very, very cold object that has um, unicellular marine life. And once again, really beautiful rings as well. Wow, this is a very interesting looking object. Almost scary to look at because of its redness due to the effects from the red dwarf. Oh, oh sorry, the brown dwarf, that is. Uh, the brown dwarf itself would not really produce a lot of heat to, to, um, to provide this planet with a lot of um, warmth. But if you were to look at the star from, from this planet, this is what it would look like. Very, very far away and producing almost, almost no warmth at all. Now let's look at some of the more interesting ones. So this one here is the closest we've discovered. And actually, once again, it's a brown dwarf. I didn't really realize that it was, it was going to be a brown dwarf as well. Um, and this particular object discovered by Weiss um, telescope seems to have um, another frozen Titan with life. Very interesting. And exotic unicellular marine life is present, uh, oh, actually, not just marine, terrestrial life as well, is present on the surface of this very unusual planet whose surface looks a little bit scary again. Very, very red, very unusual looking, and there's your life. It's purple in color. I guess that makes it a little bit exotic. And there's even sun-like stars here. So here's, for example, one once again with two planets with life on, um, on them. And this is a very, very sun-like star that has an ice giant uh, who that has a moon where there is what seems to be organic unicellular life. And this particular ice giant, uh, or that the moon of this ice giant looks like this. Once again, very interesting colors, very, very beautiful, very unusual. And I don't think I've ever seen anything that looked so unique in my experience with Space Engine. Look at how very rugged the terrain is here. It's not perfectly spherical even. It has these unusual formations on the surface that seem to be indications of ancient collisions that basically made this moon very rugged. And the life here is unicellular and subglacial. Maybe this is actually what we'll discover on moons like Europa and Enceladus that orbits our own uh, planets. And the second object here is a Titan-like object, frozen Titan with life on it, with really cool colors again, unicellular marine and terrestrial life, and um, very cold temperature of minus 214 degrees Celsius. Now, oh no, this kind of gives you an idea that at least as of now, our understanding of creation of life indicates that there's probably going to be quite a few exoplanets out there that uh, might host objects and planets and moons that will support life where life have actu has actually developed. Um, some of them will be far away from us, some of them will be very unlike our planet Earth, but the important part here is that, statistically speaking, the chance for, for life outside of our planet Earth is actually pretty high. Now, before we stop this simulation, I wanted to show you how much of our own galaxy we have actually explored in this video. So 
what I'm pointing at right now is the Orion's Nebula. This is where a lot of famous stars are located, including uh, the infamous Betelgeuse. And if you were to look at the distance from Orion's Nebula to Earth, so here's Orion's Nebula, here is Earth. So this distance right here is about 1400 light years. We've, we've actually looked at various objects within about a thousand light year radius from our planet Earth. And that only represents about this much of our entire galaxy. So we'll only look at this little circle in the middle. And within that circle, we were able to discover close to about a hundred or even over a hundred various objects that had all sorts of life on them. Now you can imagine if we were to look at the entire galaxy, we would discover a lot, a lot more. And this is once again, our understanding currently of the potential for life out there in the rest of our galaxy. Now, maybe one day we'll discover an actual planet that actually does have um, life somewhere on it, not too far away, so we can actually go and explore it. But for now, we can only speculate and only look at objects nearby, such as Enceladus and Europa, and hopefully discover something on them. And currently, my bet is on Enceladus, the moon of uh, Saturn, that is famous for having these unusual plumes of water that come from its surface because it seems to have very heated um, core and also a lot of hydrothermal vents on the inside where we know life can easily be created, just like it is on Earth. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this and learned something from it. And in the next video tomorrow, you're going to learn something else. So don't forget to come back. Don't forget to come back tomorrow and space out. And as always, bye bye.